mysterious disease causing international anxiety. We're in Brazil, ground zero of the Zika outbreak, with disease detectives trying to stop the contagion from spreading. The World Health Organization declaring a global health emergency. And here in the U.S., with at least 50 cases now confirmed, there is mounting concern. Here's ABC's chief medical editor, Dr. Richard Besser. Three-month-old Anna Beatrice coos like any normal baby. But Anna was born with microcephaly, an extremely small head due to abnormal brain development, a devastating neurological condition that doctors suspect is linked to a Zika virus infection during pregnancy. Hey, sweetie. In Brazil's countryside, the Barbosa family is one of thousands of families dealing with the virus. Roughly 150 cases of microcephaly occurred here in Brazil in 2014. But last year, there were more than 4,000. Anna's mother, Bruna, tells us that her Zika infection happened when she was about 12 weeks pregnant. She was the last one in her family to get it, but they were all sick. Fever, a headache, and a rash. Nobody imagined it could affect her baby. When during your pregnancy did you know that there was a problem with Anna Beatriz? Nenhum. Never. Nenhum. Anna's condition wasn't picked up until the sudden silence in the delivery room. Doctors told her Anna would only live for a day, but she's defying the odds. And she's looking right at you. Does she recognize you? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Every case of microcephaly is different, but many doctors and scientists say the big rise in cases has a common cause, a mosquito carrying the Zika virus. 80% of those infected with Zika don't even feel sick, no symptoms at all. But for those who are pregnant, evidence is growing that it can be a disaster. To control this outbreak, the government is trying to reach 50 million houses across the country every month, sending in the military and public health teams, going door to door, looking for anywhere mosquitoes could breed. For a country this size, that's a monumental task. There's no cure, no treatment for Zika. So the Brazilian government is trying to control this epidemic the only way it can. Every house in this area is visited at least once a month by the soldiers to look for any place a mosquito could breed. So if a soldier knocks on the door, you have to open up. We follow one soldier along on his inspections. He's even looking to see where the water drains out of the refrigerator, the condensation, to make sure there's no pooling water there. That's all it would take for mosquitoes to breed. He's putting a chemical, a, a larvicide, on the top, which will kill those and hopefully will last and protect this water until the next time he comes. Like everyone in Brazil these days, we apply mosquito repellent constantly. But the virus is on the move. More than 50 cases so far reported in the U.S., all travel-related. Lizzie Morales, a Houston mother, contracted Zika on a Christmas visit to El Salvador. You can see my lips, bumps in my lips, my eyes, my ears. You have no strength, no energy, like, to do anything, not to even sit down. All you want to do is lay down and sleep. She wasn't pregnant, her symptoms subsided, and since the virus is believed to leave your blood when you recover, any future pregnancies should be fine. Today, Florida Governor Rick Scott declared a public health emergency in four counties where people have been diagnosed with Zika. The Red Cross is telling donors to hold off giving for 28 days if they've been somewhere that has Zika transmission. And just yesterday, the first confirmed case of Zika transmission in the U.S. spread not by a mosquito, but through sexual contact with someone infected by the virus. Dr. Peter Hotez, a tropical disease scientist, said blood transfusions and sexual contact should be the least of our concerns. The case of sexual transmission is a bit of a red herring. Our efforts need to be focused on preventing uh, mosquito bites. Hotez says he's very worried about Zika spreading in areas like this one, right in the heart of Houston city limits. Lots of discarded tires that are thrown out by the side of the road. And these discarded tires, after a rain, will fill with water and fill with leaves and other debris. And this makes the perfect mix for mosquito larvae to uh, breed and develop. And then they'll become adult mosquitoes. And then they're going to fly across to all the houses that have no window screens, no air conditioning. So all of these factors come together to create that kind of perfect storm. He says that just like the favelas, the shanty towns in Brazil, impoverished areas here are prime breeding grounds for mosquitoes. In many respects, this looks like the uh, public health movie you show to all the first year medical students or public health students, but it's, uh, 
it's not in a developing country. It's right here in Texas, here in the United States. Back in Brazil, we toured a place where some scientists are undertaking a radical experiment to reduce the kind of mosquitoes that spread diseases like Zika. The goal is to create a line of mosquitoes that die before they can bite people. We are in a mosquito factory. This building here, it produces two million male mosquitoes genetically modified every single week. Only female mosquitoes bite people. These males were altered so that their offspring will die before they can bite anyone. After they reach maturity, they're sprayed out the window of a van. They mate with the females in the community and the offspring soon die, reducing the spread of disease. Since the start of the study, 25 million mosquitoes have been released. And amazingly, the number of mosquitoes that can spread disease has gone way down. They said they're all male and male mosquitoes don't bite. I hope that's the case because there's 245,000 of them. The long-term impact of this experiment isn't yet known. These mosquitoes are not approved for use in the U.S. and critics worry that messing with genetics may not be safe. Microcephaly isn't the only concern when it comes to Zika virus. A debilitating form of paralysis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, has been on the rise in places with Zika. The big question, though, is whether Zika is the cause. To answer this, Dr. Ashley Staczynski, a first-year detective with the CDC, took us with her as she conducted an investigation in partnership with the Brazilian Health Ministry. Her team gathers data and blood samples, looking for a possible link between the Zika virus and this rare and devastating condition. What's it like to do what you're doing? Well, it's humbling because of the significance of the public health problem, but it's also sort of exciting to be on the investigative side and trying to figure it out in real time. The Summer Olympics are now just six months away, and so many questions remain. Preparations have begun, including fumigating the main stadium for mosquitoes. Late last week, Rio's Olympic Committee said they were confident athletes in Brazil will be completely safe. But American wrestler Alyssa Lampe, who is in Rio training for the games, isn't so sure. She says she's being cautious. Wearing bug spray, I guess. Um, uh, I haven't really been outside the hotel, so um, I think that's really helping. Um, but yeah, it's kind of scary. The reality is we are just starting to learn about Zika virus, about its effects, and how to fight it. We don't yet know either what proportion of the children born with microcephaly have it because of Zika and whether there are other conditions besides microcephaly that may be associated with Zika. So as the dancers here prepare for carnival, a worried Brazil wonders, where do we go from here? For Nightline, I'm Dr. Richard Besser, Paris Cabo, Brazil.